one of Elijah Muhammad's great ministers, Minister Jeremiah Shabazz of Philadelphia. When I was taken out of New York, Brother Jeremiah replaced me. And I told the Imam I would come here to help him. Elijah Muhammad built me a million dollar mosque in New York. When I came here, I was put on the west side, upstairs in the back. When my son drove me there, he said, Daddy. And I hushed him, and I went on and preached. Some of you were there. The little place in the back started growing so fast. We had to go down to a big ballroom, and we were filling the ballroom. Man. But I was being tried. And those of you who know Imam Waratuddin Muhammad, you never heard me in the public speak against my brother. And my children, who I feed at my table, they never heard me say nothing evil about my brother. Imam W.D. Muhammad. He had a work to do. And no one was to interfere with that work. This is not the time or the place to talk about that work. But he did what Allah desired him to do. I want you to know that I miss him. And I loved him much. And the last time I saw Imam W.D. Muhammad was at the funeral of his brother, Jabir Muhammad. And when I knew that he was there, I got up from my seat and I went over to him. He started to get up. I said, Brother Imam, you don't have to get up. And I kneeled down and I kissed my brother. And I told him that I loved him. And he said, I love you too, Farrakhan. Now many of you, you think that because he went, as you would think, contrary to his father, that he shouldn't be loved. Let me ask you a question. If you love a father, would you mistreat his children? Ask Elijah Muhammad's family. Have I ever turned them down? Whatever they asked of me, if I could do it, I did it. Why? They are my father's children. And I could never say that I love him and then plot and plan against his children. Well, I am his child. How could you love him and plot or plan against his son. Dangerous. I have suffered among you and I have never retaliated. You know what black leaders have said against me. You know how frightened black people in power are to sit with me or talk with me. Yes, 
But my days of suffering are over. And unfortunately, the days of many of us to suffer has begun. America is under the hand of God and her society is unraveling before our eyes and before the eyes of the entire world. God, through that man, is taking her down. That little black man that you're looking at that you never really understood When he told me what to say to the world about Reagan's plans, he made it clear that I should tell the world that I got it, that you got it from me, Elijah Muhammad, on the wheel. He's not dead. He's alive. And right now, he's in power. That's why I can say something and he'll bring it to pass. Just try me and see. Look, this is not for you, you little people. Today, I'm calling Satan out. Because I will reveal him today. He's real. Here's your country. The unemployment rate. Nearly 10%. But the rate of black men. 17% unemployed black women 12 percent 25 million american people are unemployed or underemployed larry summers an advisor to mr obama said the level of unemployment will by all forecasts remain unacceptably high for a number of years you think you're going to see a recovery? There will be no recovery. I'm sorry. You think that I don't love the country of my birth? This is the country that nurtured me. I don't like what white folk have done to black people but my heart don't have bitterness and hatred because I understand that that was the will of God however I have to warn America and today I will warn our president of what's coming Take it or let it alone. Look, the income gap between the top 1% and the remaining 99% of the U.S. population has grown to a record high. Some of you have lost an average of 25% of your 401ks while the wealth of the 400 richest Americans went up by 30 billion dollars. Three million nine hundred fifty seven thousand six hundred and forty three homes went into foreclosure in 2009 setting a new record. And they say that in 2010 it is predicted that this trend will continue even beyond 
2010. Now, if all these millions of people are losing their homes, what do you think is happening to their minds as America begins to unravel? Listen. There have been 154 U.S. bank failures since President Obama took office. Ten states are on the verge of bankruptcy and 41 are facing budget shortfalls. Several states are ready to declare a financial state of emergency. This is why they're cutting out music. They're cutting out other programs. They're firing teachers because there's no money available. But where is the money going?